It is a Monday in Southern California. Hopefully everybody can comfortably hear me. I think we're in here nice and comfortable. I see my guest is here. Get myself situated. This is a Monday show here on Narc Abuse TV Network. We hardly ever do a show on Monday. But, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Let's uh, let's bring in our guests and um, we're going to talk about your body. We're going to talk about your body. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what is happening in my world over here. <laughs> I really don't. I, I I'm sitting here. Hold on one second. It's almost like I have a hangover from last Monday. Oh. <laughs> and I don't mean an alcoholic one or anything like that. And it's like an internet glitch in my head hangover. I was anticipating anything that could possibly go wrong because I was so highly disappointed last Monday when we could not get this show on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was extremely disappointed. Yeah. And uh, I was bummed out, to be exact. I was seriously bummed out <laughs> uh, by the glitch that took place. Uh, but I have you now. I have you right now. And I, I am very happy. Um, as I just told you, Lauren, uh, I don't really do shows on Monday unless I like somebody. <laughs> that sounds awful. It doesn't mean I don't like other people. It's just that I have to really have a good reason to do a show on a Monday. Uh, so since I've been after you for a while to be on Narc Abuse TV, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that you said yes. Uh, to join me and uh, we could do a show so that I can showcase the woman that you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. So um, hello to everybody that's coming in or that is here right now or passing through. Uh, Sabine is here. Tracy, a retired mom, um, um, B-Man, uh, Matt, uh, Matt, we're going to get together. I got a chance to reach out to you. We can do a show together uh, and others that are here. Um, happy moonlight. Um, I believe that says F uh, Cameron or Kamer. Um, I'm tearing up everybody's name. <laughs> Say that again. Say that again, please. It's Laura. It's Laura. Okay, that helps me so much better. Uh, <laughs> I just, um, so I just got to get this off my chest. Last week, Monday, we had the Instagram glitch. Mm. I got to get on my soapbox for a moment. And I was so happy Sunday night, and I was so happy when I woke up Monday last week and go like, "Okay, Lauren's coming on. We're gonna we're gonna do this. this is a three part series or more. We're gonna talk about this. I'm so excited. You know, all the show prep. We went back and forth. We, we all that energy before, and then finally we're gonna do the show. And it was like, you got to be kidding me. We <laughs> seriously are not doing this show. I was so ticked off last Monday. <laughs> Okay, now you can speak. Go ahead. You're going to say. Go ahead. Exactly the same. I can, I can <laughs> actually believe the timing. It's like, I, it was like, and then I was like, Paxton, I'm, I've got a glitch. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I was taking time trying to figure out how I'm going to tell you something's wrong <laughs> through my tears as I was upset. I was having like a little three year old tantrum over here. <laughs> this cannot be happening right now. <laughs> We're all tripping out. All right. Anyhow, uh, enough for getting that out of the way. Um, just wanted to get that out of the way. I've been holding that in for about a week. <laughs> I wanted to like write you and go like, or or call you and go like, you won't believe how I really feel. And I was like, I said, no, I need to control my nervous. I need to regulate. I need to, I need to regulate. Regulate yourself, Paxton. Regulate. Oh, yeah. Sorry. 
I've been holding that in for about a week. All right. Now, back to the show. <laughs> I just had to get that out. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, Lauren, uh, I don't do intros on this show and all that kind of stuff because, like, you know, we get right to it. But I don't know what I just did. I got rid of something. Uh, I am going to read this, though. Hmm. Here we go. Uh, my name is Lauren Bond. I specialize in interpreting what behavior and body language communication within home, work, and educational settings. I probably butchered that. Um, essentially, you help people with their behavior. Pretty per much. se. Yeah. Pretty much. All yeah. right. Yeah. Feel free to expound on that. Well, I kind of help people embrace their behavior more, understand their behavior more. Um, I'm really kind of focused at moving away from any kind of judgment on behavior. It's just understanding purely what our behavior communicates. Um, and it's totally related to what we're experiencing physically. Um, and so it's just to help empower people to understand why their body is doing what they're doing and why they are behaving in the way that they are um, without any judgment. And um, by the way, if you're wondering, you see me doing this with my eyes it's because i just vented some emotions that i had uh and so if you're just joining you're like why is that guy crying already every time lauren speaks <laughs> because she's such a goddess about nerves <laughs> she's the goddess of nerves <laughs> all right i am gonna get serious you know i take this stuff very serious yeah. i really do very serious so let me get this camera thing in here gotta do that all right this is a Monday show, which means you have no idea how I'm gonna, what my mood is gonna be on Monday. Uh, <laughs> but this mood is uh, happy. I'm happy that you're here. There are a number of things that individuals experience uh, in their home setting, with work, um, in their relationships, and and many times that behavior is more reactive than it is calculated, or in other words, intentional, uh, mm -hmm. controlled behavior. Uh, we're going to have moments where we have reactive behavior instead of actually having the type of behavior that shows that we have a pattern or a lifestyle of having self-control. Mm -hmm. We can be moved or, as it were, guided, pushed, uh, tempted, baited into reactive behavior. Mm -hmm. But understanding our nervous system, understanding who we are can have a major impact on the way that we respond instead of react to other individuals. Please do me a favor. The majority of people that tune in to watch these shows, of course, watch because of the guests and not myself. Yeah. Explain, please, how what you do can help an individual if they've gone through abuse or essentially um, they're living with someone who's constantly wearing on their nerves. Mm, mm. Well, I think that the first fundamental um, component to understand is that our environment shapes our nervous system. So, so we all come into the world, um, you know, wanting and needing a balanced nervous system uh, where everything's online, where yeah. we're able to respond intentionally to any given circumstance. But unfortunately, if uh, our body has been in an environment that's perceived as threatening, our nervous system shifts state into defensive mode, um, obviously, because if our body feels threatened, it's needs to defend itself so it shifts state uh, to a defensive hypervigilant state and when we shift state to survival mode or what i call ninja mode or um, collapse ninja mode what mm -hmm. happens is our prefrontal cortex goes offline so when our body shifts state into survival mode it cuts off access to all the other systems that it doesn't need immediately to ensure survival so often it's your digestive system sometimes your reproductive system, but oh. more your prefrontal cortex. So your kind of sense making machine is, is offline. So, and what happens when that happens is we lose our ability to manage our emotions, access logic and reasoning in the same way and understand the cause and effects of our behavior. Um, we purely are in what I call ninja mode where we are geared to survive and our thoughts and behavior are all defensive based. So our thoughts match our state. Um, and our behavior emerges from that state. Our behavior will emerge 
Mm-hmm. It'll literally sprout from that that state that we're in, ninja state uh, mm-hmm. that we're in that you described. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's literally trying to deal with the perceived mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Uh, what it considers a guaranteed threat. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I say it's not about judgment because to judge yourself for your survival behaviors would be incredibly unfair. Um, and if your body wasn't in an environment that was threatening, it wouldn't need to defend itself. Um, and something that um, we are geared to seek as mammalian beings is connection. So if we feel safe, if our environment is outweighed with safety cues instead of danger cues, we stay online. So then our nervous system is balanced and we aren't prone to reactive behavior if connection is the key player. So when connection is established, the body relaxes and then Mm -hmm. the body stays regulated and then behavior will spontaneously emerge as pro-social from a regulated state. So, So it's purely down to the environment and how the body experiences the environment that it's in or the environmental cues so in an environment where the danger cues outweigh the safety cues the body will shift state to defensive hypervigilant thoughts and behaviors in an environment where the safety cues outweigh the danger cues the body then can stay more regulated and pro-social behavior then will emerge so behavior is emergent of our physiological states and there's a lot of misunderstanding around behavior how some people behave like that on purpose or people are you know and often with children it's like oh they're doing it on purpose or they're doing it to provoke me um mm-hmm. and maybe so but but if they are doing it from that state it's a self-protective behavior that they've had to a- adopt and adapt um to ensure survival and a lot of this is unconscious so it's it's understanding that a lot of the patterning is unconscious mm-hmm. And we often think we can try and trick our body or tell our body to calm down, but that's not. Um, And I used an analogy with someone I was talking to a little while ago to try and tell your body to calm down or tell somebody to calm down when they're very dysregulated. It's literally like trying to put a bandage on your finger when you've grazed your knee. It's a completely different part of the body. And you need to connect, not connective. Exactly. Yeah. And, and because it's not connective, technically, Connection is the fundamental thing that mm-hmm. we need to be looking at exactly. from what I'm understanding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Based upon what you're saying, yeah. in order for us to be, be locked in yeah. <laughs> uh, with other individuals, yeah. we need to be connected. Of course, yeah. that sounds very basic. To, that's like two plus two equals four. Mm-hmm. But the two plus two equaling five happens when we're not connected. Yeah. The two plus two equaling five happens when we are not connected. Yeah. But when we're connected in a safe place, yeah. the safe cues are there. Yeah. Our body responds properly. Yeah. But if not in a perceived threat, go yeah. ahead, please. Well, you're, well, I- you're the expert. I'm just trying to absorb this. Uh, <laughs> by the way, before you go on, my friend, uh, by the way, if you are joining, uh, we're here with Lauren Bond. Uh, Lauren is in the UK. Uh, Lauren, what is this? It's almost nighttime over, nighttime over there. Was it Five dinner three. time? Five yes. But your poor children are not eating. And your your family is not <laughs> eating because of this. But thank you so much for taking out of your time. You were going to say something, though. Go ahead. Um, we're able to respond as our authentic selves. So our regulated self is our authentic self. Our dysregulated self is our self trying to protect itself. So our defensive behaviors don't define us. Our defensive behaviors are necessary when our body feels in a state of threat due to yeah. having to react to the environmental cues. So, so I often talk about, um, you know, and that's something we'll obviously get into more detail in as we go along, but if we're very dysregulated, the process and the mantra that I say to all my clients is remove, regulate and shift state. And that's, that's really the only way if you're very dysregulated and you're in ninja mode, you have to, well, you get into the practice of removing and building your window of tolerance, which is what it's called. Mm -hmm. way, So you can observe your reactive behavior a little bit more and remember that you are not defined by your reactive behavior. You are needing to adopt and adapt, um, 
to those self-protective behaviors in order to keep your body safe. And, and it's purely unconscious. The mind and the body respond to environmental cues. Um, so trying to um, add conscious thoughts to the mix when your body's had, had, a, had a perceived threat in play, when your body has experienced more danger cues than safety cues, um, is again, like I said before, the bandage on, on the grace knee, because it's all about something that I call the stress gap and understanding that our body perceives threat at eight milliseconds and it wow. only is with our conscious mind at 500 milliseconds. So wow. just thought begins. So often, and I've used this analogy before, if I was walking down the road and I went to pet a chihuahua and the chihuahua bit my hand and drew blood, um, mm -hmm brain would pattern that experience obviously once all the stress hormones have kind of um, died down my brain okay. that emotionally based memory so not based on facts based on emotional charge emotion An emotion emotionally based memory is what would take place absolutely and that's what the brain stores uh, the memory based on the emotional experience at the time so if there's emotional overwhelm it could be banked as quite a traumatic event and then the brain patterns that and that's what determines our behavioral uh, um, response the next time so i could then a couple of weeks later be walking down the road with a friend and a little time mm -hmm. comes out to to say hello and i freak out because my body has perceived that as a danger cue um and when it hits my conscious mind i'm quite embarrassed because i'm like oh it's a little chihuahua <laughs> but yeah, right. but we've got to be really um, aware of the fact that what the body perceives as threat, our conscious mind doesn't actually register a lot of the time and it can be misdiagnosed. So, so in terms of, of that being a patterned thought, um, I could be sitting here talking to you and I could hear a dog bark in the background and my mm -hmm. body gone into a, a stress response right. um, at eight milliseconds. And as I'm talking to you, you could be frowning, like scratching your nose and I could be like, why are you looking at me like that? And then misdiagnosing you as the source of the threat. As, as, as a source of uh, uncomfort uh, within a given situation or uh, the source of maybe even feeling unsafe, where in, where, where in actuality you're laying out that the body, as it were, I'm just going to say the body as a whole, you're being more sp specific, yeah. is just all it's doing is reacting to an emotionally based reaction that it had, it could have been when you were two years, I mean, uh, five years old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it holds on to that yeah. that stored information yeah. because it needs to be ready. The brain's not going anywhere. It's like, I just need to be ready whenever, you know, this happens again. You know, hey, you need to do something because this is not good. Absolutely. And in that whole moment, you and I are talking, all of this is happening. Yeah. And I'm going like, why are you jumping to the dog? And, or, you know, and you're looking at me going like, why is he acting like he don't like me? That's just rude. <laughs> that, can, yeah. Yeah, that That is... You, you're fascinating. That's why I wanted you on the show. And that's why we're doing this educational series. If you are just pulling in and you have no idea what Paxton and them are doing here on a Monday, hardly ever do shows on a Monday. Some of you were surprised when I was uh, looking to do this last week. But I only do shows on Monday if I like somebody. <laughs> so I'm just, I just tease you with that. We just talked about that. Uh, I, I love and like everyone uh, that I deal with on this show, but I had to get this show on. We, uh, we are discussing our bodies. Uh, that's an overview of a statement that I made uh, because Lauren is very specific. I don't know why I keep doing that. I told you. <laughs> I told you why I'm here. All right, I'll just tell everybody. We talked before the show. Let's just get this out the way. Okay, everybody. I literally overslept. I do not oversleep. <laughs> I do not oversleep. I have no idea what's wrong with me. And uh, so I can't say that word, so I have to pick another word. Uh, Lauren is uh, detailing for us um, how we can. Hey, you did your nose. You did your nose. You twitched your nose. <laughs> what does that mean? No, just kidding. Uh, anyhow, a little levity uh, about a very serious subject as far as I am concerned, and I want it here on Narc Abuse TV Network, is in order for a person to recover, it is very important for us to understand our body just as much as we may take a walk uh, eat uh, nutritiously, uh, lift weights, or whatever it may be, we need to know how our nervous system works. Uh, Lauren has been so kind after uh, you did a show with me on Open Session Podcast for my podcast uh, to be kind enough to step over here to Narc Abuse TV Network, turn your camera on, 
and uh, do a show with me here. But we're going to literally have this as a series of shows uh, discussing the nervous system, uh, our reactive behavior, and how we, if we're not careful, can allow what someone else is doing or has done to us cause us to stay in a state of hypervigilance to the point that we may miss out on the true joys of life. We literally can become confused uh, with others' behavior, uh, with another person's behavior, and they could be healthy for us. They may be just the person we need to have in our life, and we could end up losing out on uh, some good connections with individuals because we're not connected to our body properly. Um, Lauren, yeah. tell us more. Yeah, and I think just, just you know, to springboard off that, when we're, when, when we are in that sympathetic state, so when we feel stuck in a state um, that is more hypervigilant or defensive in kind of fight or flight mode, when we feel stuck in that state of hyper arousal, when we're fidgety and impulsive and hyperactive, or when we are what's called more the dorsal vagal presentation, when we're in a collapsed state, when we're very depressed and we can't get out the house when there's a lot of emotional overwhelm and it's just all too much when we feel stuck in those states um all of our thoughts follow suit so when we are in more depressive states our thoughts are a lot more hopeless and a lot more depressive and a lot more just i just can't and yeah. when we are in a more kind of hyper vision hyper aroused sympathetic states our thoughts are very much me against you and why did you look at me like that and very much like ninja so ready to ready to pound so in that moment if our state is dysregulated all of our thoughts and behavior match so if i came up here and i was quite dysregulated like like you know if, if my body had perceived a threat and i came in talking to you and i was talking to you like this and my posture mm -hmm. i was like yeah being quite hyper you would probably start to feel a little bit um hyper vigilant yourself because i'm yeah. doing things that are unpredictable and it becomes all about co-regulation and a mirrored response so that's yeah. where it can often get in the way of relationships if we feel stuck in that state um it's all about that co-regulation and whatever state we're in can often be contagious and when we are in ninja mode or when we are in me against you mode our thoughts are defensive based so it can be like i said earlier if you scratched your nose and frowned i'd yep. be like why are you running at me why don't you like me i don't understand why you don't like me what did i say wrong and then that's where we kind of we kind of lean into our thoughts, which just adds more stress hormones to the mix, which kind of keeps us locked and stuck in that state. Um, so those, our thoughts, whenever we're in these dysregulated states are often fuel for the fire in terms of just this, this complete bonfire of stress hormones that we release in our body. And that's what often keeps us stuck in those states. Um, and it's exhausting. Um, and like you say, it's, it does rob us of, of the joys of life and, and being able to connect. But it's not about shaming anyone or, or blaming or, or um, right. mm -hmm. judging of that behavior. It's about understanding and giving yourself self-compassion and, and completely allowing yourself to see the sense of it. So to look through it all the eyes, through the lens of the nervous system and understand why you're behaving in the way that you are. There's nothing wrong with you. There's actually everything right with because yeah. if the body didn't defend itself there would be something wrong so so in terms of actually just a giant reframe it's yeah. about understanding the communication behind the behavior which which is essentially uh why i wanted to do this show with you and technically initially why we did the show on open session podcast is because i wanted uh, to find someone who could explain it with the beauty and the elegance that you do, but yet very down to earth, because this needs to be looked at seriously. Um, that a person can stay in a dysregulated state and continue to label or blame someone else, which may in many parameters seem truthfully fundamental to do. Uh, but the reality of it is they could just be piling onto themselves yeah. this dis dysregulated state and they could miss out on the most beautiful relationships that could create such beautiful new memories and uh, delete the uh, abusive uh, person, the uh, memories that they have in their head. Um, that's a long way for me to say it. Let me just say it in a ghetto way. We need to, we need to, 
uh, you start laughing. See, I was trying to be serious when you started laughing. <laughs> see, we'll see what you did. No. So, so essentially, we we need to reframe it, as you said. We need to reframe the way we're acting, um, simply because we start to understand the way we're acting. <laughs> we understand that we don't need to beat ourselves over it. Uh, there's something that has taken place somewhere, maybe multiple times in our past or in a given moment that our brain is holding on to that is saying, hey, I'll keep this unless you reframe it. You reframe it, I got you. I'll do whatever you, the brain is like, I'll do whatever you tell me. You you tell me and I'll re, I'll get rid of this file and make a new one. And you're you're unlocking for us the ability to do that, but more importantly, understanding that this is taking place. Yeah. Not just how to fix it, but how we need to maybe understand what is actually taking place in our body when we've been abused, when we maybe have been a t uh, barked at by a chihuahua that, you know, scared us uh, to, to a car accident or to a number of things. Mm -hmm. And then we're holding these over and they creep out, ooze out, seep mm -hmm. out in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And before we know it, we're living off labeling someone instead of living off of understanding, okay, I'm dealing with a dysregulated person. And wait a minute, I'm dysregulated too. Let me work on myself and let that person go ahead and do whatever they're going to do. That's yeah. just me throwing that out there. Again, nobody yeah. beating themselves up. That's what you were saying, right? Yeah. And I think it's about, it's about understanding the boundary. So if somebody has hurt us, it's essential that we put that boundary in place. And, and yeah. that, that, that's, right. a, that's an act of self-compassion for both parties. So if somebody is that dysregulated where they kind of, they don't see how much they're hurting you, then you need a boundary um, to yes. stop. And absolutely deep down is a compassion act to them as well um so in terms of kind of a boundary but then also instead of instead of um i think again it's about understanding the the need to blame so so often often if you have been in an abusive situation you've had diffuse boundaries so you haven't been allowed the right to exercise a boundary so therefore blaming becomes a boundary so if you then blame somebody and it's their fault um, it's your body's way, again, of, of putting a boundary yeah. in the right. only way that you understand um, or that your body is able to at that time. So, so actually implementing healthy boundaries in and of itself is a, is a skill that, that, um, you know, is, is that somebody may find quite threatening to learn because it's completely different to what the body's experienced. So if the body is going to adapt um, any new patterns, the ninja, um, our kind yeah. of defensive self, needs to be shown that the new way or the new pathway or the reframe is safe um, before it actually puts its weapons down. So in terms of actually trying to tell our body how to do things, that's never going to work because if, and again, if you look at it through the lens of the nervous system, and I like using the ninja analogy because it's quite accessible. If you had mm -hmm. to go up to a ninja and say, oh, we're fine, just put your weapons down. This is what we're going to do now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, not gonna happen. <laughs> not not gonna happen. <laughs> You're They're gonna be looking at you out of the corner of the eye, going like, "Okay, whatever you say." Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Don't step closer. Don't step closer. Yeah. And some people live their life like that. They can meet a really nice person, and they're looking at them. Don't you step closer? And the person's yeah. going like, "What is wrong with you? I like you. I really, you know." Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. But it, but it, but again, unpredictability is a danger cue. And I had somebody actually asked me a question on one of my posts recently where they said um, that sometimes nurturing can feel or oxytocin can feel quite threatening to the body if you've gone through the foster care system and you, if you've never really had that nurturing experience. And I said that makes complete sense because, again, yeah. if you go through the eyes of the ninja lens, it's like saying to your ninja who's been thwacking in a desert land, going, yeah. oh, the <laughs> All inclusive paid resort here. Yeah? Like, come on, let's go. And the minute you try to go for your ninja, what's your ninja gonna do? <laughs> it's gonna, gonna slap you. <laughs> That's really good. Nobody else could ever. If nobody else got that, I'm telling you, I don't know how I got it. So that was a really good analogy. That was really good. I'm um, gonna watch it over just for this part where you said that. You come up with the coolest stuff. Okay, my brain, my brain just went there, and I just came back. I'm sorry, everybody. Go ahead. You were saying. But, the, but, but again, it's just understanding that it doesn't actually make Like, it's not, yeah. ninja doesn't understand words. The ninja doesn't understand no. common sense. It understands what's in front of it and what feels familiar and what 
what it has tried and tested at 100% rate of ensuring survival. So it's got 100% survival rate. It's not going to mess with that um, no. program of behavior. So no. you've got to show the ninja through consistent bite-sized steps that the way that you that you are proposing is again just as bombproof and just as um, reliable. Yeah, we never gonna right. So essentially, it's like telling the ninja, okay, that you worked for me at that moment. We can yeah. love again. We yeah. can love again, and we can like again, yeah. and we can have calm and tranquility and serenity. Yeah. We don't have to have it in little bite-sized moments, and then all of a sudden, there's destruction again. It's yeah. like a superhero movie where nobody ever cleans up the streets and the cars that are, they never show the cleanup after all the destruction. It's just always peace and quiet. And then they shoot immediately to some paradise scene. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like nobody should, there's cleanup. And technically a person moves from a reactive situation or a threat, yeah. uh, not immediately to this beautiful standing in front of uh, the altar, getting married scene. It's yeah. just the two, you know, there's, there's destruction in one relationship and then there's happily ever after that doesn't, that's a movie. Yeah. There is a cleanup that needs to take place and a reframing is what you're, you're mentioning and highlighting. Yeah. Uh, this is your specialty. This is what you do. Yeah. This particular show is not, again, for everyone. It is for those who want to recover uh, and move forward and get a better understanding of their nervous system and how their body works uh, so that they can respond properly and not just live on emotional reaction, which cannot be swept under the rug either mm. which is what you also highlight yeah and 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 the, the the starting point is to befriend your ninja so the starting point is <laughs> to be to befriend our ninja yeah so to respect your ninja and to respect yourself does it, wait does the ninja even like friends do they even <laughs> <laughs> it's constantly like stay away from me nope get yeah. back i know who you are i know what kind of person you are then the ninja is like always in that mode like Get away from me. Get back. Get back. So yeah. the ninja will let us befriend it to the point that we can propose a peaceful future instead of always living off the pain of the past. Yeah. Well, give the ninja a rest. We basically need a cult of emotional factors to let our ninja rest. So the analogy that I always use with my clients is about building a lookout tower. So... It's about, again, we can't tell the ninja to do anything. We can't approach it from a conscious level. It's purely somatic. And, and it's about the showing the body a different way of being um, through, through tiny, bite-sized, respectful steps so that the body will do it and won't fight it too much. And then after a while, you've got enough bricks and then you build a lookout tower so that the ninja can rest. So basically, the lookout tower is our parasympathetic nervous system. So... We've had a very dysregulated, overly hulked up red brain mindset, which I refer to, which is our defensive state. We need okay. to start pouring some juice into the blue brain mindset, which is our more parasympathetic state, so our calming state. Um, and the way we do that is through neural exercises that strengthen what's called the vagal tone, which is basically like a magnet that pulls it all together. So just to kind of break that down a bit, the way to show the ninja that it's safe is through neural exercises that strengthen our vagus nerve. And the analogy that I use is almost if we're looking at quite a mangled, over-exercised red brain, and we've got quite a weak blue brain mindset or parasympathetic nervous system, what's in between that is the vagus nerve. The more we strengthen it up, it's more almost like a magnetic charge. This is just my way of, of kind of simplifying it all. The more neural exercises we do, the more yeah. we strengthen our vagal tone, and then that naturally starts to pull everything back into balance. And we're in a regulated mindset. So that when somebody is making us angry or when we're having these emotional experiences, we have everything back online again so that we mm -hmm. physically then can manage our emotions, access mm -hmm. our and understand cause and effect. So it's not like we're trying to never be reactive again or angry yeah. or right about actually being able to do it with the tools um, and our prefrontal cortex, which will help us respond more intentionally. So it's not about being perfect no. and <laughs> being non-emotional. Yeah, no. It's about being, well, it's being deliberate. We are deliberately allowing the body to do what it needs to do yeah. 
to be a well a well balanced mother father uh, son daughter uh, whatever we need to be we can do it and show our children that we overall no not perfect that's not what we're shooting for but overall we are able not to live a reactive life but we are a responsive connective human being who is living based upon what the body naturally wants to do which is stay at peace stay calm and essentially deal with whatever abuse we have gone through the body's ready to deal with that yeah. because it wants to say hey look you tell me what we doing with this you want it gone i'll get rid of it but if you want to live with it and keep looking for shows or videos that keep you in a hyper vigilant state i'll go with that too yeah i'll do whatever you tell me but the results of either choice to either literally choose to walk down a path of tranquility and calmness that has to be a choice just as much mm -hmm. as we can well unwillingly or willingly choose to stay in a hyper vigilant state uh, so we may be going through different aspects of life this is neither yin or yang the whole purpose of us doing this show today i wanted to do a series of educational shows with you is because i wanted to highlight what you do for those who are ready to do it mm. this is not for anyone else that doesn't want to do it or doesn't want to take a tablespoon or <laughs> a, a spatula of this and swallow it down mm. this is for those who see the the very fundamental points that you're bringing out of being a connected person with mm. connections of peace mm. this is not overturning the planet this is letting the body do what it needs to do while it's on this planet which is connect with other individuals. Mm -hmm. Uh so because of that this is really just an overview show if you're watching this today. If you want to tell a friend because this show is the first in many that you will see connected to Narc Abuse TV network that will highlight for those who are ready for recovery. If you're not ready in your mind to do that and you're still just maybe going no contact or a number of other things gray rock but yet you want to understand what your body is going through every step of the way as you're dealing with other individuals then that's why we're putting this and many more that you will see uh over the next technically 18 months God willing we're still doing this show uh you will see a number of individuals but they will all be spearheaded by this beautiful person in front of me uh Lauren will be the one highlighting to us many things in regards to our body and every step of the way what we're going through we will she's the first time her hearing this uh I will be presenting her with scenarios that maybe you're going through some of you have written to me and told me certain things you're going through no I won't say the individual's name but I will present those scenarios to Lauren and she can as it were lay out different aspects almost as if you're you're going to have a session with her in real time but she's not going to know your name uh uh and and um no one else will so that you can have an idea of oh so i can do this 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 and i can make it through today and you can would you say bite size right bite yeah. size bite size steps of bravery basically i think I, lady gaga no 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 <laughs> wait you got to say that again i don't care if, i don't care if, if king kong said it what did you just say <laughs> That was cool. You just dropped that in there and you kept going. Don't do that. Don't um, don't you don't you do that UK thing on me where you just drop knowledge and keep walking. Bite size what? What did you say? Steps of bravery. Bite size steps of bravery. Yeah, you need a t-shirt that says that. You need yeah. you need to yeah. Yes, you need you, you need a you need a post a yeah. posting on your page that says that. Uh, yeah. I you know what? I'm I'm handing that over to one of my daughters. We may have to get some shirts like that. You better get one. If not, I have to get one, make one, and then when we do the show, that's what we need to have. Bite? Okay, Bite. okay all right. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. You were saying, I had a moment. Go ahead. It's, again, it's it's scary, and it's hard, and it's it's not fun. Um, you know, it's it's not a, a – the kind of analogy that I use with a lot of, of the clients that I work with, it's like it's basically like entering into the deep, dark wood, and you need somebody to help you with that. You can't do that by yourself. And, and doing this work and doing recovery – um it, without self compassion is warfare so it's about really having somebody with you to help you through somebody who's been through the woods and knows the way out somebody who knows the yeah. way through 
to help guide you and show you and remind you that you also know the way, but you need to help your body remember um, what that looks like through various unconscious somatic exercises, neural exercises that help the body to shift states. Because once your body shifts back to your regulated authentic self, the behavior just takes over. So again, it's keeping on reminding ourselves that that the, all the, the, the positive, the positive behavior takes over is essentially what you're saying. Yeah, not even positive. It's just pro-social. And there's such a thing as okay. right. So if somebody is coming at you or hurting anyone you love, you know, you can be very regulated and very angry at the same time. Yeah, but I was going to say, right, right. We'll have a very um, intentional response to that, um, a very authentic response. And again, we all thrive with authenticity. And, and again, in terms of co-regulation and what we mirror and project on one another, what we project, we get. So if we are authentic, if we can really be authentic with one another, it helps us all to calm down around one another. Um, you know, if what you see is what you're getting um, on any kind of level. So it's about really tapping into our authenticity. It's not tapping into calm. We're not going to be calm living through a pandemic. Yeah. Then yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's about really understanding and empowering yourself um, to be able to navigate through the state so that when you're starting to feel angry or overwhelmed, you know that you're not going to get stuck there. You're not going to be lost in the woods, that you have learned a way, you have learned the tools and the map to navigate yourself back to to that sense of, of safety. So yep. you're connecting with yourself. So in terms of connection being the predominant need, yep. finding a way to connect with yourself. And often if you've experienced abuse, there's a massive disconnect between what your body's doing and what your mind's believing. Yep. And there's very little education about why your body's doing what it's doing because we haven't had the luxury of being able to sit back and go, ooh, my body's doing that when I'm straightened. Yep. We've been on ninja mode ready to thwack so yeah. so it's about understanding it respecting it and working with your ninja and that's what i mean by befriending the ninja you're working with your behaviors you're not trying to expel them or shame them because that's right. just creating more disconnect mm -hmm. helping yourself with loads of self-compassion which again is a danger cue but it's very unpredictable and very unfamiliar it's about and that's why i keep saying bite-sized steps because it's it's we've got to respect our body we've got to respect our self-protective behaviors we've got to befriend our ninja to be able to work with the body and connect back to the body authentically right so we're we're laying out or as it were we're proposing uh to anyone uh that you're more than welcome to enjoy what lauren is proposing to your brain and to your body uh the techniques the skills uh, the tips the strategies uh, to be able to move in a direction that maybe you've never tried or heard of before. No, we're not talking about just sitting at the top of a mountain uh, that you climbed, which can be beneficial. We're literally talking about studying your body to take in these bite-sized uh, steps uh, of information and uh, activities uh, that she will be laying out over, like I said, a number of series of shows that we will be doing together here on Narc Abuse TV. Hopefully it will be on uh, Monday or Tuesday as we uh, go forth. But go forth. But you will be able to find her here, which is the main objective, and she will lay out different scenarios and strategies that can be beneficial. But if you need to talk with her, you still there? I still have you, Lauren. You still there? Uh, but if yeah. we, but if you need to speak to her one on one, which I strongly encourage uh, you to do so, uh, feel free to do so as well and reach out to her or. Like, comment, share, follow uh, Lauren's page. Lauren, please, your Instagram page is? Unique underscore behavior. Yeah. So feel free to uh, do that as well. This was, again, I repeat, just an overview of a show. Um, we have a number of things that we will be highlighting to you. Uh, I believe we come back again next week, I believe. It's not here in front of me. Oh, it's over here somewhere. Anyhow, um, correct, Lauren? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's right. Monday. Yeah, so next Monday we will be back and we will begin, truly begin, a, a series of shows that we will be tackling these bite-sized uh, uh, steps that uh, you can take. Uh, if you have already gone no contact from a, an abusive situation or removed yourself or they, quote-unquote, uh, 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 discarded you and, and uh, moved on, 
whatever the case may be, whatever state you may find yourself in, angry or not, upset, hurt or not, we want you to know we're looking, if you notice, Lauren is nodding her head, we're looking to walk you through those steps, through those states, mm -hmm. through those stages, so that you are not alone. Mm -hmm. To the best of our ability in a time, very critical times that we live in, where you can feel like you're alone and no one else understands you, we want you to turn inward and consider the possibility of understanding your body more, connecting more with it as you deal with uh, treacherous behavior and uh, someone may be discarding you or you're dealing with and living with someone who is an abusive person to you. Uh, whatever the case may be, no matter what we highlight to you here, if it works for you and fits for you, feel free to share it with others as they move through their recovery. It's easy when you have, well, as it were, uh, an entire retreat you can go to and go through recovery. But everybody can't do that. Sometimes you have to recover in your own bed, in your own home, in front of your own kitchen sink and refrigerator. Feel free to join Lauren and myself as we kind of walk you through it. Right, Lauren? Yeah, totally. So, do me a huge favor. Next week, we will be back. This platform is not about how many people follow it. My daughters and I didn't start it for that. How many people view whatever we put on? Because we get mail back from everyone that benefits from it. And that's what we live for. We live for the people who benefit from our guests. So do me a huge favor. If you know someone that needs to maybe hear what Lauren is highlighting, go take a look at her page, come back for the show, get your notebooks ready. Class will be in session starting next week. You will see her and a number, a plethora of individuals coming through uh, this platform and this network. Uh, IGTV will never be the same because Narc Abuse TV wants to show you you don't have to stay mad or dysregulated as it were Take that as a beautiful word, not a bad word, because your body is trying to survive. It doesn't deserve abuse. You don't deserve to be mistreated. And now you're going to tell your body, it's okay, I got this. Lauren is going to lay out some things to you that are going to be very beneficial for you to be standing on your own two feet and never look back toward anyone that mistreated you because you deserve to be treated better. But first, let's connect with the body, right? That's what we want to do. Totally. Lauren, any last words before we go? Oh, We've gone 40, 48 minutes yeah. and so much. I, I said we we're going to do like 35 minutes, and that was it. We ended up a little bit longer because of my, my soapbox at the beginning, and I started crying because we didn't do the show last week. <laughs> <laughs> well. I can be upset. But, uh, um, Lauren, thank you. I just want to tell you that. Thank you. Okay. And thanks everyone for joining. Um, I hope you've all got something from it. And yeah, I look forward to going forward. It's going to be great. Yeah. Well, yeah, it should be because this is the last time you're going to hear me do this much talking. I just did it. You know, so. <laughs> you're, you're on next week, next Monday. It all starts. It's on like Donkey Kong. There we go. <laughs> all right. So, so, uh, I had so much fun with you. We did the podcast show. You. <laughs> Uh, I just want to I want to ask this and everybody, you know, if you guys all leave, that's OK. I understand. I'm going to bore you right now. So I'm just curious. Uh, and when we did the first you know, set of shows together on the podcast thing, you, you mentioned about this pillow moment you had. I, I, <laughs> I was, was going to ask you real serious, but I can't because it's the cutest thing is the cutest part. Oh, no. I literally, I literally, we did those shows together and I literally ignored everything else and immediately fast forward so I could watch that spot all over again. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> uh, I hardly, I hardly ever watch any of the shows that I do over again, took, especially oh. to completion. I, I just don't, I just, it oh. just, I, I lived it. I don't need to, you know, watch it again. But, um, but that moment I had to, can you explain oh. the pillow moment that you had uh, when you talk about being dysregulated and stuff like that? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I had two, but um, but the one I I had uh, one with my children. It was one one morning where uh, it was particularly stressful, and we tried to get out the door, and it was 
we were running late and then my little girl soiled a nappy. So it was running, sorry, too much information people. But um, Oh wait, I'm little... sorry, wait, hold on a second. I'm gonna do translation. Remember, we're here in the States. That's a <laughs> diaper, by the way. This is yeah, yeah. a soiled diaper. She I... said nappy. I don't want you guys all freaking out going like, getting your Google going like, what's a nappy? <laughs> okay, all right. So, sorry. Uh, so, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and my little boy was was telling me a story just at like 110 miles an hour. and. And I was, I was starting to feel like really dysregulated yeah. and I was starting to feel the ninja maker full on appearance. And I just said, guys, mommy just needs to quickly grab and, and <laughs> scream in the pillow quickly. And I, and mommy, mommy's body. <laughs> and I grabbed the pillow and I screamed really loud in it. Um, and I made them both laugh and I felt so much better. I got rid of that energy. And we've also had moments where we've punched pillows together because um, we're helping our ninjas find calm. Um, yes. And yeah, it's just, it's a really good way of when your body needs to scream, scream out yes. rather than at. So yes, scream yeah. out rather than at. Yeah. So instead of screaming at someone per se, it's yeah. better to make sure that we find a way to release that energy that is being built up, pent up or whatever it may be. Because if not, the body starts going like, okay, we can just start lashing out at people. And we just and we start lashing out on social media. We start lashing out, you know, road rage. We got all kind of, we just become a lasher. Stop yes. lashing. We become a lasher. Hey, we just, a, a thracker, a thracker. A lasher. <laughs> I just, I just, I just love your vocabulary. It's just, I'm learning so much. Uh, all right. Okay. We've tortured you people enough. You have you have better things to do now than watching the both of us. Well, me. You can watch Lauren. She's cool. She's cool for school. Okay. All right. So everybody, we like you guys. We love you guys. Stay Thanks. safe. And uh, remember, stay connected to your body. Right. Right. No matter how much somebody mistreats you, mm. stay in the moment. Stay connected. Don't let them have that energy they don't deserve because you deserve to be treated to the optimum. Uh, level because you are wonderfully made so uh everybody take care of yourself lauren i'll see you again thank you my, we did it we actually got to show up <laughs> i'm so excited okay all right i'll see you later my friend everybody take care we'll see everybody uh well you'll see quite a bit of us over the next two weeks uh, this is the first of 16 shows that you will see here uh lauren will be two of those the one here now and uh one next week uh so 16 shows you will see here over the next uh technically seven eight days they're about nine days uh, so enjoy yourself. We've got a, a lot of great people coming on uh, to help you with whatever you're dealing with here on Narc Abuse TV Network. And see you later, my friend. Bye. Bye-bye.